Hi everyone, my name is Edgar Huang, and I have coached high school students to apply to colleges for uh, more than 10 years by now. And uh, so today I'd like to talk to you about uh, the most expensive mistakes that students make in their college applications, and uh, especially in their essay writing, of course. And uh, so, but before I start, let me show you, uh, this is what happened in 2019 when the students apply uh, this class of stu uh, students from a class 2020 uh, applied to colleges. And uh, so uh, this is just like a very, very typical list of the students that uh, I have, I can send to uh, colleges, uh, especially those top colleges from Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, MIT, uh, Yale, so and so. And uh, so uh, when you write college application essays, you need to stick to three principles. Number one, you answer the question. Uh, this sounds like uh, a very simple request, but many students don't do it. Uh, they even understand every word in this in the question, but they seems like something is blocking them from answering the question. Number two, uh, you need to make yourself shine in front of the admission offices. Uh, so that's the second principle. And finally, make every essay achievement based. Uh, you need to show evidence and show your achievements to justify whatever the claim you make. Uh, that's the that's the point. A college application essay is definitely not the icing on the cake as many students uh, believe and all parents believe. Uh, it is your way of selling your academic and non-academic achievements uh, which only serve as raw materials yeah, for such presentations. Uh, you cannot just say, oh, I have achieved a lot over the years, and then I'll naturally get into those top colleges, even though I write crappy essays. That's not going to happen. Uh, so that's why you have to make uh, extra efforts to make yourself shine uh, in your essays. Uh, the purpose of writing your college application essays is to attach a warm face to the code numbers, such as your GPA, uh, SAT score, uh, AP scores, so and so. So that's why that way you can uh, make yourself look like multi-dimensional uh, in front of the admission offices. It's not just something like you you have done very well academically, but apart from that, you have other things to show. Okay, uh, I just need to warn you that uh, this session will be. Uh, a show and tell. Uh, I'm not going to tell only, uh, rather I want to show you and tell. Uh, for that matter, I will read uh, extensively. So read essays uh, from the students uh, that I coached in the past. Anyway, so this is, uh, let me just show you uh, some of the common mistakes in college application essay writing. Uh, re mistake number one, having not many or no achievements to show in essays. As a result, the essays are based on I believe. Now, this is a, a big mistake. It's a big mistake. Uh, let me show you an example here uh, from a student, one of the students. When I was 11, my family's washing machine broke and my mother put me on the task to fix it. Though I suspected she seriously expected me to repair the machine, I conducted my research on the internet. And in under one day, I successfully disassembled reassembled and fixed the washing machine using nothing but my father's old toolbox. While this broken washing machine was among the toughest I have tackled, handiwork has not been a stranger to me. Earlier that year, my father received a better job opportunity in China and moved there to support our family financially, only returning to the United States to visit once every few months. As the oldest of three sons, I've been left with the great responsibilities, including all the physical tasks a father normally uh, completes. Successfully repairing the washing machine immensely boosted my self-confidence. Since then, I've treated every task, hard or not, with an I can do it attitude. In the six years of my father's absence, I've repaired a jammed gar garage door and the plumbing in my bathroom, assembled furniture and fixed uh, malfunctioning computers. While your other kids spend their time playing video games, and these household tasks are my video games. Even at a school, when my teacher needs assistance with her technology, 
a volunteer, no matter whether I know how to handle the task, but I have typically succeeded. My neighbors also ask me for help in jobs like jump-starting a car or repairing their computers, and I'm happily of assistance. Everybody who knows me knows me as a handy boy. While managing bus、uh, busy schoolwork, taking care of my family has become one of my top one of my top priorities. Apart from handyman jobs, I have in fact、uh, often found myself doing jobs on behalf of my mother's mother as uh, as uh, too. As a Chinese native, my mother's English is not as good as she expects. As a result, I've assisted her in writing many emails and conducting numerous phone calls. When my family got into a car accident, I communicated with the insurance company and handled the rest of the issues. Before I turned 16, my mom was the only person in the household who could legally drive. Having three sons meant she was always on the road, driving back and forth to get us to our extra extracurricular activities. Therefore, she was often too tired to make dinner, so I picked up cooking. I started with making、uh, penne sandwiches. Gradually, I taught myself to make more complex recipes, such as fried rice, pasta,、uh, lasagna, and、uh, lasagna and the steaks. My mom and especially my brothers love my cooking. I often, I also often prepare dishes when my family has visitors over, and I sometimes bring my dishes into community church gatherings. Many who tried my dishes were surprised to find I had made them, and told me、uh, or my mother the dishes were impressive. My cooking has largely influenced my brothers as they are starting to learn to cook as well and craft their. Own recipes. After I turned 16, I immediately tested on my driver's license.、Uh, tested to get my driver's license.、Uh, now my mother is no longer the only one able to drive. I always happily drive my brothers to all activities they attend, help run family errands, and drive myself to my personal affairs,、uh, lifting a great burden off my mother's shoulders. My mother thanks me、uh, every time I help. While I appreciate her、uh, praises, I simply feel it naturally right to help my family. The responsibilities of helping my family has helped me grow immensely as a young man and taught me many life skills, such as how to adapt to situations, complete tasks using limited resources, communicate with adults, and learn to be a responsible human、uh, person. Taking on these jobs has also helped to connect me with my teachers, neighbors, church, and the community at large, and brought an overall positive light into my life. Okay, so that's、uh, of the total essay.、Uh, it cannot be say it, it's it's a it's a bad essay. It's not.、Uh, I try to my very best to help the student. Uh, lift up the whole quality of the essay by presenting achievements. But as you can see, it does show achievements.、Uh, you know, in terms of、uh, cooking, in terms of、uh, fixing machines, and in terms of helping the family overall. So you cannot call it a bad essay. However, the overall achievement, the level of achievement, is kind of. Uh, expected because you're not supposed to、uh, treat yourself as like a privileged in the family. I don't do anything ever, so、uh, you are supposed to help your your family. And、uh, so it, when you read this, as you get a sense that the student doesn't really have not much and、uh, not much anything else to、uh, to to talk about about himself. That's why he has chosen、uh, to talk about、uh, you know helping the family. So when I was presenting this essay to、uh, parents in a session,、uh, the, I was asking them to rate, you know, from a one to ten.、Uh, why? Why do I?、Uh, why do I ask parents to rate? Because you know,、uh, every essay, when you write it, its function, its only function is to、uh, scream to the admission officers without screaming that I am the best.、Uh, please admit me. Right, that's the only power,、uh, only、uh, you know, function it has. So if you want to do so, your essay must carry some convincing power,、uh, naturally. So、uh, one represents least power, and ten、uh, represents most power. Okay, convincing power. So that's why uh, most uh, parents 
uh, chose to rate this essay at the level no about not above six, uh, at most six. So I and I agree this uh, essay probably could at most reach the level of six, uh, not that much. And so you may say, what kind of essay can reach like a higher than that? And what kind of essay uh, essays can uh, carry more convincing power? All right. So let me show you another example uh, from another student. Why do I have to get a vaccine when I'm not even sick? I asked my mom when I was five. Because you are protected by a body shield, though you can't see it, my mom said. I found solace in her explanation. A night 10 years later, no longer content with the range of this body shield, I lay awake, questioning, why isn't there a vaccine for depression? That day, my friend's brother, Michael, couldn't escape the uh, tolerance of depression, the eighth suicide in our school district in the past six years. The entire community sank into sorrow and angst. The local schools had implemented numerous counseling methods to stem the problem of adolescent suicide. At a Palo Alto Youth Council meeting, my fellow members and I discussed how to treat youth depression. Shrouded in anguish and confusion, we immediately thought of starting more support groups, but I was not convinced. Is there no better way? Dissatisfied with the traditional methods that focus on the treatment of depression after symptoms have appeared, I wanted something different. That night, an idea clicked. Can we develop a vaccine that would cultivate a strength and the resilience to ward off depressive thoughts in the first place? After hearing my idea of a preventive vaccine at a community gathering, Mr. Stephen Estrada, a Korean War veteran, shared his story with me and several of my peers. After he fixed an airplane engine, he tripped and fell on the tarmac, crushing his back uh, vertebrate. vertebrae. The doctor told him that he might never be able to stand up again. He was only 19. But not only did he recover with the determination he had developed in training, he also pursued a CS degree and worked for NASA for 30 years. I was inspired by the strength of his story. Serene, who, also, who was also there, said to me, his resilience truly moved me. I hope more people can hear stories like these. In that moment, I realized that veterans' stories distilled out of their courage and the tenacity could be the vaccines to cultivate resilience and shield us from depressive thoughts. As I shared this idea with more of my peers, I realized that there is a divide between students and the military. Most of them only knew veterans from books. I decided to found Students Partner with Veterans, SPV. I would like to contact the more veterans but I had no connection to the military. So I used every bit of time during lunch and even passing periods between classes to call and email veteran organizations. Sometimes I was even calling veteran posts in my dreams. Surprisingly, we eventually received strong support from national leaders of the American Legion, uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, and other veteran organizations. Through interviewing veterans who shared their positive stories, we have helped the students, from, uh, students learn from veterans' perseverance and courage, increased the students' resilience, and the persevered veterans' uh, life, uh, and the preserved veterans' living history. Through encouraging students to uh, volunteer at the VA hospitals and hosting events with veteran organizations, we have helped to bridge the gap between students and veterans. Now, over 400 students participate in SPV in Silicon Valley alone, and the Santa Clara County Office of Education recommended SPV to 31 school districts across the county. SPV has 19 chapters in schools in the United States and Canada. In the past three years, no student in Palo Alto has committed suicide. And I sincerely hope this record will long last. When Secretary of Defense Mattis invited me to attend the 2018 Memorial Day observance at Arlington as a guest of honor, 
when the mayor asked me to speak at the Palo Alto Veterans Day event. And when I hear parents are saying that their students are becoming more optimistic, I understood more clearly my responsibility to realize my vision. I know it's just the beginning. The understanding that the program has brought to me and my peers continues to drive me forward. Okay, so this essay, in comparison to the other essay, is fully loaded with achievements. Uh, the student has demonstrated a very strong uh, leadership by taking in the initiative uh, to develop this program, national program, and expand the uh, impact of this program, not only to the, her school, but also to the whole uh, Palo Alto uh, area and to the nation and to other countries. So this, this is uh, very important for a student to show uh, what kind of a person he or she is uh, by playing a leadership role on the national level. Uh, some students don't have like a national level leadership, no problem, but at least you need to show uh, some, uh, to some level. Also, the student's leadership has been very well recognized. You know, how many times have you heard a Secretary of Defense inviting a high school student attending a national uh, event like this, right? It's a huge honor. So that's why uh, this essay is, has a very uh, big convincing power to show to the admission officers that I am the best. Uh, please admit me. And this student uh, later got accepted by an Ivy League university. Okay, so here, the point, uh, getting back to the point, uh, you have to show achievements. And then some parents may say, what's going to happen to my kid who has no achievement or achievements? Uh huh. Or maybe you are saying that my kid has, you know, some achievement academically, but nothing, nothing more than that, because my kid has like gone to school, uh, get getting good grades from uh, classes. Is that isn't that enough? Uh, absolutely not enough. Not enough because uh, GPA can get get as far as you know, get getting getting uh, getting you into a very good state college if you have nothing else to show uh, to put on the table for admission officers to consider. So uh, things that can get you into a top college, uh, such as Harvard, Princeton, Yale, MIT, Stanford. Uh, definitely not as GPA. GPA is important, but it's only the foundation. Uh, you uh, those things that put can put you into those top colleges got to be your outstanding extracurricular activities. So you got you'd you'd better be prepared in high, uh, for high school years, uh, for you in high school. Okay. All right. So second point: students who have achieved tremendously underestimate the importance of college application essay writing, uh, let alone the fact that many of them are not even equipped with the knowledge of playing the game of college application, though they think they are. Uh, so I call these stu overachieving students a risky population. Uh, sometimes they think they can do it, and then they experiment on themselves. And finally, they end up with uh, doing something uh, either crazy or in, uh, you know, incompetent as a result. Uh, most of the students have only like a, one chance to apply to uh, those top colleges. And at around a year of 18 years, uh, when, when you're 18 years old or, or, or so, and then if you uh, pass that uh, stage, then it's gone uh, for good. So that's why uh, ideally you don't experiment on yourself if you are not equipped with the kind of knowledge. All right, so let's take a look at this essay uh, by a student. Being raised in a Christian household, I was told the story of Genesis in which God created the earth and the stars. It made sense to me as a child that something as immense as the universe would require an all-powerful creator such as God. Since I was raised in a, a, a Christian, I believed that everything had to be explained through God. As I knew... Uh, grew older, and I understood some of the scientific explanations of the origins of the universe. I tried to rationalize how God created the universe through science as opposed to just through faith. I believe that scientific concepts such as evolution were just a means for God to do his work. 
The issue was a sensitive topic, so I often avoided talking about it. However, an opportunity to present itself when one of my closest friends asked me if I truly believed in God, in a God, although I knew he was an atheist and that he was going to challenge the foundation of my beliefs. This comfort was going to get me closer to the truth. What became clear in my in our first few arguments was that our picture of the issue was incomplete. In our conversations, we often ran into roadblocks because we lacked the basic knowledge on topics such as the Big Bang theory. In addition,、uh, the purpose of our discussion was more about winning the debate, which led us to ramble about fallacies my friend believed to be in the Bible, such as how it was possible for species to、uh, repopulate with the negative effects of inbreeding if only two animals of each species survived on Noah's Ark. Talking about the fallacies was preventing us from getting to the root of the issue, as none of those fallacies could definitely、uh, disprove the existence of God. However, one of his points about the Earth being six thousand years old, according to the Bible, brought great doubt to my mind. Was I to believe carbon dating or my faith? Even though his point did bring doubt, it was not conclusive evidence, as those years mentioned in the Bible may not. Pertain to modern day measurements of time. I realized that if I wanted to truly believe my religion, there were many questions that needed to be answered. At the same time, I asked myself if it is even possible to fully remove doubt when religion is based on faith. Finally, when I opened my ears and let my friends' thoughts come through, did I realize just how much I had yet to discover and how complex the issue is. Only after we began to take each other's thoughts into consideration did I begin using research articles and the internet to synthesize our ideas to evolve our analysis. Every day we shared what we found, and we came to the conclusion that the only way to disprove the existence of God is by determining the origins of the universe. However, after doing more research, we discovered that the theories. Describing the origins of the universe were speculative at best, and the age-old question remains unsolved. By being willing to challenge our ideas and listen to each other, we both realized that the topic we were discussing was not as black and white as we once thought. After centuries of science, there is still no way to prove one side or the other. However, through realizing the complexity of the issue, did I understand why? So many different modes of thought and religion exist. I used to just brush off these different modes of thought as ridiculous. However, in reality, all they were doing was looking at the issue with a different angle. The mystery of the question is the reason why the cultures of the world are so rich and diverse. We may never get an answer to the question, but maybe it remains unsolved for a purpose. That's the end of the essay.、Um, so, in the nutshell, you can tell this essay is telling a process of debate with a friend. And what has the student achieved? Not, not much, as you can tell, right?、Uh, and、uh, everybody can do this kind of thing. And you're applying to Harvard University. So, does does this essay make you stand out of the crowd? Right. This is a very good question.、Uh, does it make you shine in front of the admission offices?、Uh, again, in the session, I showed this as a two parents, and、uh, most of them rated at、uh, at the level below five,、uh, at the level five or below. So,、um, so when you write such an essay, you need to be really、uh, ask yourself, you know, what am I doing here? Okay.、Uh, by the way, I'm not like commenting on this essay based because. Based on it's like a whether it's like talking about religion religious issue or not, okay? It's totally irrelevant. I'm a Christian as well.、Uh, it's not about Christianity, about a religion. It's rather about applying to colleges.、Uh, in this case, Harvard University. So that's why、uh, the, my point here is that you really need to know、uh, you are applying to a very top college in the nation in the, in the world, and you need to really make yourself shine. And unfortunately, this essay、uh, is not doing its job、uh, that way. 
Okay, so third mistake. Many students forget that they are applying to a college by writing an essay or essays. Uh, that's a very big mistake. Uh, they think that, oh, yeah, you have a question over here, so let me answer it. And then they forget, I'm applying to colleges, uh, at the, at this particular college. Okay, so this question is from MIT. Tell us about the most significant challenge you have, you have faced or something important didn't go according to plan. How did you manage the situation? All right, so this question is asking for uh, two things. Uh, you know, read the question, right? Two things. Number one, name the most sig significant challenge. And the second, manage. That's the key. Those are the key words. So take a look at this uh, essay, version one, from that student. Uh, this summer, I attended the Women's Technology Program at MIT, my first exposure to electrical engineering and computer science. Now, everyone, I want to bring you some background knowledge to this uh, program. Women's Technology Program is very, very tough to get in. Uh, the rumor says that it, it has about like a 5% acceptance rate, meaning if you can get into it, you can get into MIT, uh, Stanford, Harvard, uh, those colleges. You know, So very, it's very tough. It's very tough. So uh, this student, as you can tell, is nobody. Just like the last student, okay? This last student uh, who wrote this essay uh, was uh, over an overachiever as well. Unfortunately, unfortunately she didn't make it to, to Harvard. Uh, this essay was written by the student who was a high achiever. I just want to provide some like background knowledge, uh, information as well. Uh, let me continue. So it's about a WTP, okay? There, I thrived through whole day lectures in the late night office hours, devouring problems set challenges past midnight. However, my biggest challenge was learning how to say goodbye. By my last day on campus, I had already bid farewell to my classmates, uh, classrooms, labs, and the machine shops, to my last sight of uh, pull down chalk uh, chalkboard boards, exploding uh, Capacitate, capacitors and my 9,000 RPM motor and an end to searching for rooftop com commons, underground tunnel art and the connected buildings. That night, I tried to capture the laughs of my friends uh, through photos and signatures, but ultimately wept at the tunes of uh, Claire de Lune, a thinly veiled scream of please don't forget me or rather don't let me forget you. Saying goodbyes is realizing you may never uh, do so, sneaking farewells under the doors of sleeping friends instead. It means taking an elongated power nap at 6 a.m. to have early flyers uh, wipe your tears at their departure and embracing impromptu goodbyes to a girl who slept through her flight departure and to my dorm through my flight window. There is a reason goodbyes are good and the farewells are well. And it may be probabilistically difficult to bump into my friends again, but memories of them remain entrenched inside me. Every time I walk through my internal map of campus, I reminisce these joyous memories because they make up who I am. All right, so uh, this, uh, the status of the essay, when I first saw it, and this is the last. This is the last time I saw it as well. What do I mean? I mean, I never touched it. Uh, I didn't even, you know, change anything on this essay. There are multiple mistakes in there, as you can tell. But um, overall, it's well written to its best. Okay. The problem is, I want you to read this question one more time. Does it really answer the question? Right. It's asking you to present your most significant challenge and you are saying what oh yeah saying goodbye to people is very uh it's my most significant challenge seriously it sounds like you are just saying ouch when you are not suffering in any sense you're just trying to say something ouch okay so it is uh not really answering the question uh plus how did you manage the situation right is there an answer here? No. So that's why this essay is very off track, uh, very off track. And uh, I told the student, please rewrite it 
Okay, try something else. And so the student rewrote uh, for this question. And she wrote a draft of two, three, and the final version here. Okay, let me read it. My burning head was anchored to the frigid toilet the night before the most important day of my year, the AMC, the biggest national math competition. Ever since making the distinguished honor roll at the first time, uh, the first time I took the AMC eight, I had studied feverish, feverishly for the AMC ten and twelve. However, I could barely hold my head up, and I strained through the problems and I slept the rest of the week. When my failure was confirmed, I was devastated. I answered far more than enough to qualify for round two, Amy. However, I wasn't supposed to get sick. I wasn't supposed to misread and fail at sub subtraction. At my, as my identity at a humanities-oriented school revolved around the math, I found it hard to accept the reality, my inability to do math at any circumstance. That March, I began studying seriously, vowing not to fail to qualify for Amy as one of the few girls in the math camp full of boys. I found solace through books, online handouts, and every existing test, dissecting errors until they vanished. The proofs I had written made me begin to understand what I had learned and reminded me why I loved math. The next year, I still felt at an uh, ounce of doubt for myself, someone who was always the shortest and the youngest. Searching through the qualifiers list and finding my surname, I finally screamed with joy, proud to be the only female and the only junior in my high school to qualify for Amy 2018. Uh, this essay, as you can tell, is much more mature. Uh, there was a significant challenge and also you see how she managed and you, you see achievement here as well. And so this question, uh, this essay really has answered the question. Uh, so that's why uh, the point here is that you definitely need to uh, write the essay to impress the admission officers. Uh, you don't want to just write answer to answer the question, okay? So impress the admission officers. Uh, final point, many students forget to answer the question. Uh-huh, yeah, uh, even though they understand every word in the question. So, and we say, what the heck? And how did that happen, right? A very good question, okay? Not just like a one of my students uh, forget forgot once, not like a two students, three students, many, many students experience that kind of those moments. Yeah, they understand every word in the question, but they forgot to answer the question. Uh, and you say, how is that possible? Let me show you an example here. Uh, this question is from Yale. What is it about Yale that has led you to apply? Okay, answer. Uh, community service has been an integral part of my life for the past few years, providing a bountiful source of enjoyment and in meaning. I'm extremely passionate about giving back to my community, earning medals from the President's Volunteer Service Award for over 700 hours in service across my activities. I performed the piano as an ambassador for music, mentored youth groups for robotics summer camps, and given robotics presentations across the state. The service learning program at Yale would provide an excellent opportunity for me to continue my love of community service throughout college. I can apply my new influx of knowledge from Yale to my service learning opportunities, creating a continuous loop to benefit my personal growth and the community. Done. So in this essay, uh, I don't know. Uh, do you get a sense what the student is going to do at Yale, right? Why do you go to a college at all? It doesn't matter. It's Yale or some some other co another college. Uh, you're going there mainly to be what a student. You're going to be a student over there. You're gonna study things. Okay? Yeah. What do you want to study at Yale? Oh. Do I, should I say something in that regard? Yes, you haven't said anything, right? Oh, what, what, ha, what have you said? Oh, I want to go to your EO to do community service. Really? You can do community service in any college. You don't even need to go to college to do community service, right? You're already doing it, for instance. Exactly, so that's why um, I have a little idea exactly why 
you have to apply to yield through this asset. You know, I cannot, I cannot tell. So that's why uh, I killed in the first round uh, by by reading the first uh, draft. I said you have to uh, write something else. And so after my coaching, uh, the student wrote uh, version two, three, four, uh, and this is the final version. Okay, so President Peter. Solovey's mission statement for Yale, invested strategically in science and engineering, entices me. Uh, the expanding engineering program contains a wider variety of courses that encompass my interests, providing me with valuable resources for research. I'm eager to take advantage of C's department's cutting-edge research opportunities conducted into robotic manipulation and the biorobotic systems, such as the Grab Lab. Additionally, Yale has exceptional humanities subjects centered on learning broadly and deeply through inv invigorating courses, such as music history and East Asian studies, my favorites. Last but not least, I especially like Yale's abundant service learning programs, which will make my learning truly solid and relevant and allow me to continue my strong passion in community service throughout college life. Okay. So uh, in this essay, as you can tell, the student has, uh, you know, shrunk the portion of uh, service. Uh, rather, uh, he has stated very clearly ex exactly what I'm coming to Yale to study, right? Obviously, this essay has demonstrated the student has uh, done his homework. Yeah. Uh, what am I going to study? You can tell in this case, robotics or physics or something similar in the uh, area you can tell and uh, where are you going to study C's department okay and what exactly do you want to research uh, robotic manipulation and the bio robotics uh, in where uh, where are you going to research like a grab lab so obviously the student has a very clear picture to show to the admission officers I'm not bluffing I am really serious I have an ambition and also this essay has again and again uh, showing how Yale is related to me, yeah. How is related to me, right? Instead of regurgitating the information from Yale, uh, so many many students make that mistake. They just regurgitate the information back to that particular co particular college. That's a huge mistake. But how is it related to me? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's a that's not something you want to do. Okay, so. This is a model you want you want to learn from. Okay, so yeah, uh, pretty much that's the end of my today's uh, presentation. And then let me wrap back to the three principles I mentioned earlier. Uh, so number one, you need to answer the question. Uh, don't forget to answer the question. Okay. Uh, number two, make yourself shine in front of the admission offices, and with what? With your achievements. So make every essay achievement based you need to show evidence and uh, some of the students uh, may say that I don't have an achievement what can I do sorry not much you can do you know so um, you need to find another college that fits your profile uh, and they say how can I achieve uh, that's something you need to do starting in ninth grade at least at least you know so before ninth grade in you need to start to cultivate your interests in areas or ideally have like a not necessarily narrowly just one area you can just broadly survey right different areas of, um you know disciplines in the fields and then you will na na narrow down to one area which you will claim as your major later on and achieve a whole lot in that particular area so you cultivate interest uh, at least the one very strong interest and also cultivate ability. And you see, what? how can I uh, cultivate ability? Uh, you learn things, but you don't know how good you are after you have learned. So go out and compete, and then you can test out, oh, I won. And the, when you win something, you will gain confidence. And the uh, repeated confirmations from competitions or other venues uh, will give you repeated confidence, boosted confidence. And the more confidence you have, uh, the more you will achieve. It's a, like a very benign cycle uh, uh, you will create for yourself. So that's why uh, it, when, you, when you get into high school, starting from ninth grade, you will begin to achieve already. 
uh, not only in academics, but also beyond academics. Uh, some students are really good at uh, another thing or, or other things such as art, music, sports, or uh, you know, some other things like leadership and, and also committed service. So in every air, area you, uh, you are involved in, you must achieve something. Yes, committed service uh, and the leadership, you must achieve as well. Right? Don't just say, I have done something. So uh, what matters is what you have achieved, not what you have done. So achieve a lot in high school, okay? And then you can... Uh, don't forget the point I made earlier that uh, your, your, the purpose of writing your college application essays is to attach a warm face to the code numbers uh, about you, all right? And uh, so if you have any specific question, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, that's my email, satenglish at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.